Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hello, everybody. This is Scott, and I'm glad to have my good friend Craig Klaus with us as we talk about the local market update for October 2021. So, Craig, inventory has been a big topic. It seems like everybody, when they ask about the market, they're really asking about inventory. (laughs) Yeah, and that seems to be kind of the conversation where we're going because that's what's going to change. Um, And again, thanks for having me. It's glad to be back. So, yeah, we're talking a little bit about inventory in in my appointments lately and questions we're getting asked. You know, locally, we broke 8,000 for the first time since late last year. As a context, we were about 4,600 active listings in March. So we're, as of today, we're about 7,800. We got up to a little over 8,000 on Saturday. So that should be the trend going forward. Which it feels weird getting excited about a number like that because it's, you know, historically that's a pretty low number, but. Yeah, we're still, I mean, 12 to 15,000 is balanced. So, and it's interesting when you look at how much it's increased and where just from the start of the year, we're at about 5,500 in January and we're right now at about 7,800 today. So. You see the increase there. We got down to about that 43 number and uh, back up again. But it's been increasing, I would say, for the last four or five months slowly. And then we're starting to see a little bit more and more of that as we've gotten into the last month or two. Okay. So what are you seeing on offers? Offer-wise, it's interesting. You know, the days of 10, 12 offers, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. We're just not seeing that consistently now. No, on some properties, I assume, but... Yeah, it's more unique. um, Something about it, large lot, something along those lines. But right now, locally, the average offer is about 0.26% above list price. It was 1.8% in June of this year. So you're seeing that, good news is it's still above yeah. List price, right? We're going above list price on offers still consistently, just not so much the range we had seen. But part of that is we're also pricing things a little bit better now because we've seen this. Yeah. You know, and at times it was hard to, in the beginning of this, to justify or to grasp the model just closed for 300 and now this one sells for 350 two <laughs> weeks later. It was hard to kind of grasp that. So people have adjusted more to that now. Um, not only agents, sellers, appraisers, buyers, all the way around, but you're seeing buyers being a little bit more choosy, a little bit more picky, and a little bit more worried about overpaying than we saw over the last probably year. And, you know, because of that, I think locally, at least for myself and my listings, I'm starting to see, we're going to start seeing more of the, you know, five to 10, 12 day range of getting an offer, meaning day five through 12, as opposed to day one through three, which still is incredible. (laughs) I mean, I listed homes back in 08 when, you know, they were short sales and they'd be on the market for 11 months and, you know, that. So we, we understand that in reality, it's still great. It's just adjustment for sellers and, and everybody, but buyers see it, they're interested in it. They don't want to get into a bidding war. They wait, they see it there four or five days later, and then they're willing to go look at it and go from there. Do you think that we're going to see some price adjustments and more common? Yeah, we've already started to see a lot of price corrections. They're not a lot, but more price corrections than previous. You know, I think I mentioned it last time. You know, we always kind of joke that sellers are the last ones to acknowledge a market shift. And kind of going back to that earlier example, if I go to, you know, we meet with a seller, you know, the house across the street sold two months ago for 500 earlier this year, then we would have been 525 and probably sold for 550. And now it may be, listing at 510, 515 and getting to 520. But if some sellers still want to go to 525, 530 initial list and we don't get it, then you'll see those price corrections getting back to where it probably should have started does not mean prices are going backwards. Yeah. So we are seeing some sellers uh, for when we're representing the buyers and we see the sellers represented by other agents that are having a little trouble understanding that the climate now is a little different than it was a few months ago where our buyers are asking for some repairs that are basic repairs and the sellers are just saying no no repairs at all you know the buyers are a dime a dozen and they're seeing the perfectly good buyers dropping off are you seeing that yeah i mean we're going to start to see that it's always behind the curve meaning like you know we were still getting offers when this market first started going nuts where they were asking for concessions and home warranties because it took a while to catch up to the fact that we didn't have to do that anymore as a seller 
And so it'll be the same going the other way. We're starting to get offers now with home warranties again. I mean, hadn't seen that for a year. Asking the seller to pay yeah, for the buyer's. asking the seller to pay for the buyer's one-year home warranty. You know, we actually had a closing a week or two ago with seller concessions for the first time. I, it's been probably a year and a half, two years, maybe longer since we've had that. And you're going to start seeing that. Same with inspection things. You know, we're going to get that where... You know, in the past, we might have been able to get away with just a small credit. You know, there might have been five things and we're like, OK, here's a five hundred dollar credit just because of the market mm -hmm. and go from there. Now it may be, you know, it's more so where we've got to get estimates and, and negotiate repairs as normal. It just hasn't been normal for a year and a half. And again, we, we work hard to protect our sellers and make sure that, you know, we're getting through those things. But it is going to be a little bit of an education for uh, both buyer and seller and agents that, you know, there are going to be some more inspection demand request type things coming up. And we're going to have to be a little bit more negotiable and flexible than we had been, say, six months ago. Yeah, and it is a little bit more of a gamble in today's market than it was a while back. You know, uh, before, you know, you see some repair requests come in and you go, okay, well, we could probably, you know, the market may have appreciated in the last week or so. <laughs> we may find a higher offer. But now, you know, when we've only had one or two offers on a property, we may not see those same offers again the yep. next time around. Yeah, and the buyers know that. I mean, they know there wasn't eight offers that they competed with. Mm -hmm. And everybody's becoming more and more aware of that. And so, yeah, you have to factor that in and just, again, being able to negotiate and work through those things. And that's stuff that we've done <laughs> thousands of times. So, yeah. And we're back to kind of where we have one offer and one property and, and we're kind of negotiating versus just having this big bucket of Correct. offers for one property. And it's, it's a, it's a little different experience for both parties. Yeah. And, and we always keep in mind, you know, we remind our sellers, you know, even say, where we're at now price wise and what, how much we're going to net from this sale versus three months ago or six months ago, it's still okay. You know, it's one of those where to do $500 in repairs when the house prices are up here is a little different than, you know, when we were paying concessions and home warranties and still having to do repairs. Yeah. So uh, interest rates are, are moving up. Yes, they are. And that looks like it's going to be a trend. Yes, and talking with uh, with Steve, our lender, and and just you know reading on that and, and what everybody's seeing. Yeah, I mean it's they're projecting basically the average of the four major Freddie, Fannie, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and NAR is from fourth quarter about three and point one eight percent by the third quarter of next year to about three point five five, and that could go higher depends with the bond market and what they're doing there. You know, I always tell people 1% could be 75 to 125,000 in purchase price which will affect affordability. Yes, big time. And that's what has kept this so affordable up to this point. When I tell people that 2020 was the most affordable time it's been to buy a home in Arizona since 2016, people are just shocked. Yeah, they look at you like you're crazy, yeah. but it, yeah, prices went up, but interest rates remained incredibly low. And like we said last time, a year from now, it's going to cost more to buy and sell a house than it does today. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you're waiting, uh, interest rates don't look like they're going to be falling, uh, just going up. And it's basically, you're making it so if you're waiting another year, you're going to be able to afford a smaller house, maybe a little Correct. bit further out of, out of town. Well, and then from the seller standpoint, you know, you have pent up selling demand. You have a lot of sellers for the last year and a half knew they could make a lot of money on their home, but didn't want to for fear of COVID and different things. They're starting to come back. You have builders who are doing everything in their power to ramp up as quickly as possible. I mean, a lot of them now are starting to just build the home and sell it when it's halfway built already which, so that they're not losing the equity need. yeah and, and that so and then you know the big forbearance word i mean we that will end and there will be additional listings coming on the market now when i say that doesn't mean foreclosures yeah it means people that are sitting on a ton of equity can't afford their mortgage now due to what happened during COVID or whatnot but they can sell their house for market value or whatever, and cash out, it's not going to be a rush foreclosure mass. But thing. even when we do see the foreclosures uh, with our inventory where they're at, they're, they're going to sell at market value. Yeah. The last prediction was less than 300,000 nationally had less than 10% equity and were in, still in trouble. So, I mean, the nation would welcome 300,000 listings 
immediately. I mean, we're they're still predicting over 4 million units short by the end of the year. So again, that, those are things that are all going to factor in. I, I, you know, the way things are going for us locally, if we've gone from five to eight in what, 10 months, roughly, you know, that's 3000, we've got a ways to go. Now that will accelerate, but probably into the spring and into the early summer next year is when we'll start to really hit that balance. All right. Well, thank you so much, Craig. A lot of crazy stuff going on. It's just like a never ending. Changes weekly. Yeah. And it's fun. That's what makes it fun. And that's what us keeping up on everything and making sure we know what's going on and looking ahead. And that is uh, always helpful and, and helps us be able to educate our clients. Well, thank you. I look forward to talking with you again next month. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. 